Welcome back. Before we take a look at the day's business news, let's take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. And in our top business story, as the oil and gas industry worldwide continues to witness progressive growth, the call to ensure the environment's safety takes priority, according to experts. Offshore Arabia Conference and Exhibition is underlying this with the theme Regional Oil Spill Prevention and Preparedness. This year, Offshore Arabia focuses on oil spill, oil spill prevention, contingency planning and emergency preparedness. Experts from across the globe will share lessons learned and innovations as applied to oil spill recovery and more. Among the major international, regional and national players showcased at the three-day event is Drydocks World. Its Vice President for Business Development and Commercial, Engineer Ali al Suwaidi, says the growing demand for safety and quality in the industry continues to push them to exceed expectations and seek out innovation that ensures environment protection. This, in turn, helps drive businesses forward for their clientele. At the launch of the 8th Offshore Arabia, His Excellency Dr. Rashid Ahmed bin Fahad, Minister of Environment and Water, met with some of the industry's key players and commended the ongoing efforts across the region and locally. What you've seen here and what you've seen over the years, the high commitment from uh, the oil com uh, company, toward the environment so it's always the environment uh, comes first so it's not just a production no, it's a protection of the environment so uh, our national uh, oil companies in the, in the region they have a very track record and uh, in, in all uh, aspects in uh, mineral protection or transportation or in uh, readiness for uh, for any uh, oil spills so it's good to have such a function where uh, people could see what we have done and networking for the companies with other international exhibitors. This has really pushed us also to go and look for new technologies, which we are about right now. And the chairman just is an incident that I should announce that the chairman has given his instruction to establish this unit for all new technologies, okay, towards the environmental and all. And also, uh, our health and safety quality uh, processes and policy states that we are pro environment. We are investing on those which is uh, uh, hydroplasting, okay, robots are doing hydroplasting for the, uh, the hulls of the vessels when we do painting. These hydroplasting are robot controls, okay, which using the water. And, and this is, is really helping us to preserve, okay, uh, uh, the environment. Majority of onshore and offshore incidents in the past have been caused by human error and have resulted in devastating oil spill, according to Omar al wasim chairman of Offshore Arabia 2014 and chairman of the regional Clean Sea Organization, or REXO. He added that no matter how immediate this spill response is, the success remains partial in terms of minimizing environmental damage. And while prevention is better than cure, so companies such as Scubo Group from Russia hopes to enter the region's market and make a mark with the latest innovation SA Sorb. According to the company, the new sorbent can be used to collect diesel fuel, oils, fuel oil and crude oil without harming the environment. This product will help to remove oil spills from any uh, like onshore and offshore, of course, and uh, it's absolutely safe. And uh, the most important thing about it, uh, you can use this powder, it's actually powder, many, many times. So that's why it's better than any other product. Because, uh, as you know, the oil spill is always on the top of the water. So what you have to do, you have to separate the area only and put our powder on the top of the oil. In only a few minutes, it will absorb everything. Property developers in Dubai can build as many as 25,000 new homes a year without risking the sort of oversupply that reached during the financial crisis. That's according to a new report. With the population of the Emirates rising by about 7% a year, Citibank estimates that current levels of construction are in line with market fundamentals, meaning that the Dubai real estate market can absorb the extra flats and villas while still maintaining current vacancy rates. 
Additionally, city researchers have warned that with more mega schemes planned, increases in speculation and house prices are rising by as much as 40% last year. While the market's fundamentals are sound, at some point a correction appears inevitable. Citibank's report said that the return of short-term housing speculators, or so-called flippers, suggested that speculative demand was back in the market, increasing the risk that aggregate demand for property could once again far exceed real underlying end-user demand. According to Citi's research using data from Jones Lang LaSalle and the Dubai Statistics Center, vacancy rates for homes in Dubai peaked in 2010 at more than 450,000 empty units and had fallen to about 300,000 this year. The researchers predicted that given anticipated supply figures, the number of empty units would continue to fall to about 200,000 by 2020. The second tower at JW Marriott Marquis Hotel Dubai, the world's tallest hotel, is now open with 294 new rooms, bringing the total room count in the hotel to 1,098. The hotel, which opened 805 four rooms rather, in Tower 1 in November 2012, will offer 1,608 rooms across the two towers when complete. On the 1st of June this year, 1,350 rooms will be operational and on September 1, the hotel will reach the final count of 1,608 rooms, according to local reports. There will also be two new F&B outlets in Tower 2, which is identical in design to Tower 1. Markets opened in the red as the fallout resulting from the ongoing tensions in Ukraine kept risk appetite at a low with these developments set to dominate proceedings in the days ahead. We spoke to Gaurav Kashyab, the head of futures at Al Pari Middle East, to gauge what impact it will have amidst a rather busy economic calendar for the upcoming week. Yes, we've seen the ongoing tensions uh, emanating out of Ukraine have a direct impact on the financial markets. Uh, we saw Asia sell off and uh, close in the red. Uh, and we've also seen Europe also selling off as a result of what we're seeing, uh, the rhetoric coming out of Russia as well as Ukraine. Now look, of course, uh, we've never seen such direct and such uh, forced uh, stances with regards to what's coming out of Russia, along with what's uh, currently emanating out of Ukraine. But overall, we're expecting risk sentiment to remain on the back foot, which should see equity markets uh, remaining in the, in the red uh, throughout the week. Uh, overall, gold will benefit out of, uh, as a result of this. Uh, it will prosper as a result of its safe haven status. So we're expecting, of course, consolidation between 1340 and 1380 in the week ahead with a test, uh, with an upper test at about 1430 levels uh, in the near future. Um, if we look at the rest of the economic calendar, we expect to see um, tremendous amounts of volatility coming uh, in Thursday's trading session. Remember, the ECB announces its rate decision on Thursday. We're not expecting to see any major changes there. Uh, also, Friday, we have U.S. non-farm payrolls, which uh, are expected to come in at about 150,000 new jobs uh, during February. But once again, judging by the last two uh, payrolls, which sprung major surprises, it might be best to wait on the sidelines, see how the data comes out, and then start building positions. But overall, markets should remain in the red, and it'll be a, it'll be a very positive week for the U.S. dollar.